Hello, Ryan here, aka Mac, and welcome. Today, we are going to take a look at all of the work that kicked off in the months of March and April. As always, a huge thank you to all of my patrons and channel members. Thank you all so much for the support. It is truly appreciated. So each month, I usually put together a video that takes a look at all of the work that is kicking off each month, but also finishing each month, just to keep us all more informed as to what work is going on in the background. Now, before we get to it, just because a feature on the progress tracker has work beginning or completing in a particular month, does not necessarily mean that it will release that quarter, the next quarter, or even in that year, as there could still be more work required from other teams, for example, the downstream teams like audio, visual effects, and so on. Or even priorities can shift and it can get pushed back until needed. It is, however, a great guide to see what could potentially come to the Persistent Universe when, but at the very least, it shows us what work is being done at what time in the year. Now, as there were only a few features starting in March, and currently only a single feature starting in April, I decided to combine both months into this video. So with that said, let us take a look at all of the work that is kicking off in the months of March and April according to the progress tracker. And first up, we have quite a significant change coming in with this feature being the actor status tier two. Now actor status refers to anything to do with your character's condition, like their health, temperature, hydration, even their nutrition levels, and all of the symptoms and side effects that they affect, which are all currently active in the persistent universe right now and impacting your gameplay in subtle ways. And what tier two brings is more depth and effects, including new elements such as hygiene, NPC status tracking, multiple bites, DNA integrity, medical insurance, cybernetic limbs, and cloning. So I will briefly run through each one and explain a little bit about what that might mean for the player. And firstly, we have hygiene. And this doesn't mean that if you don't wash, you will die. It just means that NPCs will react to you in specific ways, depending on the condition you're in. Think of it like Red Dead Redemption, where NPCs will comment if you are really muddy and mucky and not had a bath, which in the PU could affect your reputation a little bit with them, like missing out on a specific mission, but nothing too serious. And for NPC tracking, I presume that this is referring to the connection between player's hygiene and the NPC's status reaction. It could just mean the status of the NPC itself, as they will have the same status needs as the players. So it could be related to that. I'm not 100% sure about this. Now, multiple bites. A lot of people, and I kind of feel it might be this, suspect that this is relating to your character taking more than one bite of their food, so it doesn't look like you're just inhaling a hot dog. But what I really hope that this is referring to is creature bites, getting attacked by an animal or an insect, and how that will affect your character's health, as they are well underway now creating the fauna of the verse. So part of me really hopes that this work is relating to that, as they will want the ability for our characters to get attacked and get bitten by creatures Especially in Squadron 42, as we have just heard work was done for a specific creature and how they will attack the player. So we will see. Do let me know what you think Multiple Bytes is referring to for the actor status system. Now, DNA integrity, cloning, both of these relate to the updated death of a spaceman and how your Ibrahim sphere will need regular imprinting to ensure that you don't lose too much when you die or regenerate, while also encouraging players to take care of their character. And the more that you regen, the less integrity your DNA will hold, and you will be slowly losing your character permanently. Now, cybernetic limbs are quite self-explanatory and very cool, with all manner of styles, likely depending on your medical insurance and what you can afford in-game, which brings me nicely to medical insurance, and this will likely be in various package choices depending on what you want to spend and the location you're buying it from, but each, I suspect, will offer a variety of options. So this new update to actor status it's going to be a big one, and it has 14 weeks work that began late March and looks to complete around the end of June. I would expect something like actor status tier 3 will be things like radiation, poisoning, illness, amongst others, as they have specified that they want those also. And to learn more about how and what affects your character already in-game, based on temperatures, hydration levels, nutrition levels, do check your journal on the Mobiglass. Now, next up, we have one that we have heard a little bit about recently called New Missions Salvaging Contracts, and appears to be part of a big push to expand on the available missions and content for all areas of the game. 
And as far as we know, these missions, specifically for salvaging, will vary in legality and require players to purchase either the rights or the known locations of salvageable wrecks, and in many cases, bringing players together. Now, I am assuming as they continue to monitor persistent entity streaming and figuring out how they're going to go about cleaning up servers of debris, we will see an ongoing balance to ensure that these opportunities with these contracts provide enough profit to bother doing them as currently I am already finding more than enough salvage from just what players have been up to. But either way, when 319 releases alongside the ability to remove and sell ship items and components, salvaging is going to expand in a big way. And having these contracts available likely later in the year might be a nice easy way to access Rex. But I'm going to wait and see what the PU has to offer once its history has had time to populate. Now, these salvaging contracts kicked off late March, with 26 weeks' work completing in late September. So, more likely a 3.20 feature than anything earlier. And recently added to the progress tracker, all with work kicking off in March, are two new mission types. We have Data Download and Package Extraction. Now, for the Data Download mission, it says, These missions task players with infiltrating ships defended by hostile NPCs to hack terminals with both lawful and unlawful mission types. And then for the package extraction, this, it says, is a new multiplayer mission where players will work together to recover stolen prototype ship components, with Crusader Security tasking players to extract these highly classified components from the Nine Tails transport ships before they can escape off-world. So both missions sounding very interesting, and just like the salvaging contracts, adding more content to the game in various ways. And the work on both of these missions comes to a close towards the end of June. Now next up we have sliding, which offers a new movement type for players, for example being able to slide into cover when things get a little heated. Now I've never been a huge fan of sliding in FPS games, it feels a little bit too COD-like, bit too arcade -y. but if the animations are done well and it is only for a short distance as it states, then I can see it offering quite a useful method for reducing your character's hitbox while moving to cover in a quick way. It'll likely be part of the work that is going on for offering player better cover abilities, being able to sort of hunker against a wall and then peek or blind fire, but I don't know when that specific option will be available. But again, I am not opposed to sliding, player sliding in Star Citizen, but I do hope it looks a lot more realistic than having players just sliding all over the place. Now, the work on sliding kicked off towards late March as well, with 14 weeks' work that should be finished around the end of June. And the next feature is called Swimming Tier Zero, which again is quite self-explanatory, but shouldn't be undervalued, as CIG do have big plans for gameplay and content on and within bodies of water. And recently, they have been working on tech to realistically simulate the impact of a ship landing on a body of water, so player or NPC ships can persist in the various water volumes planet side, be that a small shallow stream or a vast ocean on Hurston. They did also mention that they want to offer a lot of gameplay in general for bodies of water, and back in quarter two last year, work to create movement simulations for use with boats and other aquatic vehicles was done for Squadron 42, which eventually will come over to the PU. Now, of course, this could be a long time coming, but with the ability to swim one of these days coming along, it opens up a lot of opportunity for water-based gameplay and missions to expand from there on out. And I can't wait. Now, work on Swimming Tier Zero also kicked off late March and will complete late June. And that brings us to the final feature, which is currently the only singular feature kicking off in April, and it is the RSI Polaris. Now, a few months ago, we got to see the updated Polaris concept reworking of its 3D mesh, which did increase it in size, and thus needed a bit of an interior layout rework. I will link that video in the description below, so you can check it out for yourselves, as this was the latest information we had on the Polaris. But now that that work has been completed, the Polaris has begun its construction to get it implemented into the game, which began right at the start of April and lasts 24 weeks, finishing mid-September. Now, this is a ship that I know many are excited for, so it is great to see it's finally coming along, and fingers crossed, if it does complete in September, it'll likely drop this year sometime. But that is the end of the video, that is all the work that is kicking off in the months of March and April, according to the progress tracker. Some great new features on the way there, 
And right now, I'm going to get cracking on with the video covering the work finishing in March, as there was quite a lot of features coming to a close last month. So with that said, if you do appreciate my videos, please do consider subscribing. I certainly appreciate all of you for watching. Come and hang out over at twitch.tv forward slash supermacbrother. You are all more than welcome over there. Link is in the description. Hit the thumbs up if you don't mind. It does the channel a big favour. And tick that notification bell if you would like to be notified when my videos go live. Again, a huge thank you to my patrons and channel members. Thank you for watching. And I'll see you in the next one.